Hey everyone, welcome back for more Exos Heroes content. In today's video, we're going to dive into an in-depth guide on FC Janai. So she is pretty much new and you can still summon for her in her banner, which will be up until October 8th. That is a Thursday. So maybe this video will give you that reason if you have not summoned for her yet. So for this one, we'll discuss her hero profile, strengths and weaknesses, her skills, particularly more on her passive, her playability, recommended guardian stones, her synergy with other heroes, her overall rating, and my final thoughts. For that, if you want to see more EXO Series content, please hit the subscribe button down below. First, take a look at Janai's profile. So, her nation is, she belongs to Saint West, and her element is nature. Her position in the game is Chaos and her attack type is Magical. So she's around 36 of age. So she's a mature woman. So as we go to her stats, so this is based on her level 75 stats. So her strengths are she is above average attack. She has above average dodge and she is above, no, she has high crit hit and she has average hit for her weakness so she has low hp low defense low block and low speed so the reason why we're discussing her weaknesses and and, and strengths it's because you have to know where to supplement her in terms of you playing her you have to exploit what she what stat she has that is great and you have to mask what she has that is not good so that is why um, I like to emphasize more on her stats because it's 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 her you know it's it's her rise or her fall when you're playing her in the game especially in PvP so as for Janai's skills we're going to proceed first to her S1 uh, we'll discuss more on her passive later so her S1 is the same as her regular form, which is deals 51% damage to all enemies. So she has an overtime effect, which is poison targets causing 31% damage every turn for two turns. So the next skill is also same as her regular form. For S2, so she deals 178% damage to all enemies. So it, she has also poison target effects causing 60, 62% damage every turn for 4 turns. So it's a bit longer than her S1. So um, her S1 and S2 is just there for her DOT effects or damage over time. But her real rework when her FC came out came when her passive was released. So let's talk about her passive. I'll talk about um, her second paragraph, if you can see it on the screen. So, discuss first her buffs and her devops that, that, she, that she provides. So, for her buff, she increases attack speed of all allies in the same row as self by 20 for 7 turns. So, this can't be removed and increases 2 attack speed per buff removed. Her next, um, her next passive... Uh, also in the second paragraph is her debuff so decrease decreases attack of all targets by 40% for seven turns can't be removed and decreases by extra 2% per buff removed so both of her buff and her debuff take note is tied towards the, the first paragraph which removes buff of an enemy and gains one mana so the additional the additional percentages the two percent uh for the debuff and the two two attack speed for the buff is tied to her first passive in her in the first paragraph so you have to more or less um be aware of that and um and see what triggers so again just to just for everybody's um information if if you have forgotten what a debuff or a buff is so debuff and a buff is either an increase or a decrease in her stats so you have you have um you have their dodge you have attack defense um you have their block 
So anything that modifies that, whether it goes up or it goes down, so those are those are buffs and debuffs. Okay. So please um, remember that when you're playing the game or you're building a team around her. Okay. The next is um, on our third paragraph, which is flow of mana. Flow of mana is simply providing um, providing mana for the back row. So if Janai is in the back row, all of all of um, all of the the heroes that are with her in the back row also get mana one mana permanently. Okay, just to go back to to the second paragraph. So, um, just in case um, you're curious, the attack speed buff only increases if all of her allies are in the same row as her. Okay, all of her. I'm sorry, not not all, but some. If, if her in her team, if the only the only uh, team members that are going to receive the, the the attack speed buff is uh, on the same row as she is in. So, for example, if Jana is in the back, so if she has three other people there or three other heroes there, they will be the only ones to be affected by the attack speed buff. So, also that to note because you might forget when in terms of building a team around her. So where were we so flow of mana again so gains uh, mana permanently for the back row allies so the next that we'll be discussing is her charm which is actually in her regular form so again so the buff is for the fc the charm and the flow of mana is in her regular form so don't worry about that if you don't have her FC. So Charm afflicts enemies with lower attack than self with a Charm mark and decreases their attack speed by 10. Actually, come to think of it, this, this skill or this passive is, is very good. But, there's a but, of course. But you have to make sure that you increase your attack speed. You try to bring in modifiers to her kit. Um, the one big, the, the almost, you know, the, the 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 very obvious one is try to try to elevate her into awakened status because awakened status increases her attack significantly. Um, I'll show it to her to you later before we go to Garden Stones, but I think it doubles her attack and. Um, for charm to take effect, especially if you're going to use her in PvP, you have to awaken her so that you could more or less take advantage of charm and you could cover all of all of the heroes in the in the defending team. So this is actually a game changer, but you have to make sure that she has a very high attack, um, especially going to PvP. Okay. The next two, we'll start with Superstar. Oh, she's a lot of passive skills. I'm sorry, guys. So for Superstar um, and fan meeting, these are not included in her regular form. So again, you should get FC Genai for this one. So for Superstar, um, this one afflicts attention mark for seven turns to the target when skill hits. Take note, if 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 they dodge this one this won't take effect so increases overtime damage on the target with attention by 100% so again i'm recommending that um if if you're if you if you have a damage overtime team uh, place this first before you you place other damage overtime effects you stack them you have to stack them if you have multiple heroes that give damage over time. So you place this first before attacking with the rest. Um, that is why it's also important that you, if, if ever you try to try to at least improve, uh, even for a little bit, um, the speed of Jedi, so that she applies this first, then the rest follow, especially for damage over time damage. So again. This is a very good, very good multiplier for damage over time. Um, don't get too confused in terms of um, seeing this status effect. This, uh, this uh, superstar will, will will take effect 
if you see a very big heart on top of the enemy. So it's a very big heart. Uh, you won't miss it. It's different from Charm. Charm is a status effect box right above the the HP meter of the enemy. So this is the the superstar mark, the, the the attention mark. Sorry, is right above that. So, but I'm sure you won't miss it. I'm sure you won't miss it. I'll try to highlight it once. Uh, I'll try to. Playtest a, a a team with Janai in a future video, uh, but for now um, we'll have to we'll have to be contented with this one because I'm still I'm still elevating my Janai to awake awakening awakened status so that I could maximize her and probably provide you guys with with a you know a more a more accurate video on how or what she's capable of and the last passive so we've come to the end is her fan meeting this is actually good because um i've play tested this and again afflicts the anti-fan mark to the target when when attack triggers so double team with all living allies if health of target of, of anti-fan is less than 30 percent so once every seven turns so there you have uh, there you have it guys for your for her skills it's a pretty much a lot to take in. I've done a couple of play tests with her so far. And so far I've also had a couple of encounters with with her in PvP. I've seen that she's she's very good. She is very potent in terms of if she if you try to, you know, um, make her skills work for you, she's hard to beat. And before I proceed guys, so a friendly reminder from the Warden, please do subscribe to my channel. I've seen my um, YouTube analytics and most of you guys who watch my video um, have not subscribed yet, around 95%. So please do support my channel, it helps me a lot, it helps me build my channel and it helps me create uh, quality content for you guys anyway um let's continue with the playability so she is playable um in pvp and in tag pvp so i've i've, I've had a lot of battles with her in pvp already and she's viable um just a little bit of tweaking in terms of what team composition she should have so she's she's good in both and for PvE, she's good in the chapters. She's good in chapter 11 and chapter 12. I tried bringing her uh, through that. She's also amazing in Path of Trials. I've, I've uh, brought her there as well. She also is good in your squadron battle if it's the same team as your PvP team. And she will be good in your Holy Dragon Grounds, especially on Nature Day, in which the Dragon Stones are of nature uh, element. Also, the last part would be her Core Rage. She's good in the Core Rage because she has damage over time, and if you could Elemental, uh, elemental enhance her, um, she would be better used for you in the Core Rage. So for her recommended guard stones before we proceed, um, if you can see here again, uh, my point of reference earlier, if you awaken her, if you can see her attack, it increases more than double. So from uh, 1,328 to 2,828. So that's a very big bump in consider in uh, considering that you have to increase your attack for her charm skill. To activate and to decrease the attack speed of your enemies by three. So again, let's proceed to her guardian stones. So for her guardian stones, um, I again I have two recommendations for her. First and foremost is her uh, is your nature uh, set effects. So for nature set effects, for equip status effects, you get dodge. And when you once you awaken her, you get HP of maximum of plus 2000 and a dodge rate of plus 12 so why why nature effects because number one she already has a high dodge rate and it uh, gives her a a significant increase in her hp but what i'm what i'm most recommending right now 
is that you you build her up for the fire set so for equipment status effects so you, she, it will give her a maximum of plus 20 damage reduction but once you awaken her you could max her HP out to plus 5000 that's very significant guys so as for her synergy with other heroes so again um, she is very squishy if you can take a look at the screen those are most likely the 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 heroes that I'm recommending to surround her with so let's discuss them one by one so heroes with protect passive because she needs to survive for her to pull out her damage over time passive and for other teammates to deal damage over time uh, damage which is double so she needs to survive for her to pull that off so she also should have the lowest health uh, so that you could uh, more or less uh, have uh, the protect hero protect her so that should be in your in your team construction you should consider that the next would be heroes that increase her hp of course for her survivability and if you really want to build a team around her go with iris you can't live without iris because um with with iris um the first guardians won't have that barrier and once that barrier is taken off damage over time uh, with her enhancement deals a lot of damage and my god it's very big the only problem is that uh, wrath damage that you get from from first guardians but um if you're planning to do a damage over time um damage over time team iris is a must also uh heroes with healing are a must so for her to survive and also heroes with provoke is also a must um, again if you take a look at the team that's in the screen um tantalo is there for damage over time and for provoke but you can you can swap her with any provoke or you could swap her specific uh him specifically with naomi also if you want to take out garf and if you want to bolster your or your the, the back end or the back row um you can swap garf and put another uh, hero in the back row you could put their um kylock if you want for what he brings as well for damage over time and to have a synergy with soul bomb our next would be her overall rating so our overall rating is um five being the highest and one being the lowest so we'll start with uh, we'll start with her stats so stat wise uh Jinai is not that bad um she focuses heavily on offense that is why i've given her a four for stats so for the rest of her stats she is very squishy that is why you have to bring complementary heroes around her next would be her playability i will give her a highest of five because i've seen that she can be used in almost all the content um, she is good she brings a lot to your team and she makes your team better so she i don't see any dependence on her part except for her survivability wise which can be augmented by heroes that you build around her her synergy is i've rated her a five as well uh, out of five because um, she synergizes well with with the heroes around her not only dash does she need to be <coughs> protected by her team but she gives a lot as well in terms uh, in terms of um, increasing attack speed um, in terms of making your team better so that is why I gave her a five for synergy so guys are our final thoughts so again build a team around her for survivability uh, using heroes with protect and provoke so next is apply superstar passive before launching your uh, damage over time attacks with uh, their other heroes and number three is awaken her to support to to maximize her passive her charm passive 
she needs to have her attack increased for this to be you know fully utilized and also if you have additional zest try to summon for at least another copy of her at least a, at least fusion her once again to, so that you could maximize her stats and maximize her passive abilities so guys that concludes this very lengthy video um, this is a very in-depth guide on FC Genai. Let me know what you think on the comments below, uh, whether you disagree with me or not. So again, you all have a wonderful weekend. You all stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Warden out.